All right, we're here, we're live. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another Instagram Live. Uh, it's the end of January, 2023, and we're glad to be back in front of you guys. I know that we've been doing a lot of construction yeah. content, kind of going through a lot of our projects, showing you construction updates. We wanted to both get back in front of you and give you some state of the market updates, mm -hmm. give you a, a status kind of check-in on where the market is at, and uh, we have some questions and answers. So um, we're gonna go ahead and pull up some questions and hopefully yeah. provide some valuable content and information for you guys. Definitely, and you know, usually we're in our satellite office in Marina Del Rey, so we're wondering where, where are we at today? We're actually at one of our buildings. We're doing a walkthrough, checking a recently renovated unit so you can see how nice it is. Um, we'll, we'll showcase this another time. I think in the next, in the coming weeks, we'll kind of go over what we did here. If you stayed up to date, we've, we've walked this unit in the past when we were uh, you know, going over the scope of work. But today we wanna to focus on state of the market, what's going on in real estate. It's 2023, things are kicking off. So hit us with the questions. Yeah, these are like the, the four hottest questions that we've compiled based off of conversations with other people in the industry, um, other investors, people who invest in our deals, uh, brokers, leasing agents, kind of people throughout the industry that have we've been talking to over the last month or so. So these are the four hottest questions. We're ready to dive in. Number one is uh, regarding the transaction market, the purchase and sale market of apartment buildings within Los Angeles, what is the current status? Oh yeah, I'll go first. Uh, I'll answer the first question is, uh, I think end of last year, and there's some seasonality where things definitely slow down towards the end of the year, people get ready for the holidays. Um, but there was also this economic fear, right? A lot of buyers have been sitting on the sidelines. And I think that's still carried over. I think it's gotten, there's been a little bit more energy, a little bit more buzz in the transaction market, mm -hmm. but it's still a little bit slower. And I think we get a lot of calls um, and we've been getting called a lot in January of, hey, are you guys still buying? I have an opportunity. So I think what's happening is, is sellers are starting to realize the new uh, sale market mm -hmm. in terms of pricing and, and uh, the, the buyer demand. Um, so sellers are starting to get on board uh, and buyers, I think, are still kind of sitting and waiting for opportunities, but I think we'll get to our strategy. I won't answer that yet, but. Yeah, the other component with the sales market right now is the properties that are above 5 million. There's a rush of sellers who are trying to sell within Los Angeles and Santa Monica before the uh, new tax goes into effect in April. And so we've been seeing a lot of opportunities over the last couple of weeks with people who have called us and said, hey, I have an owner who will sell before April. If he doesn't sell before April, they're not gonna sell mm -hmm. for a while at least. So this is an opportunity to get a deal done. And obviously it just comes down to motivation. Um, I think both from the buyer standpoint yeah. and the seller standpoint uh, in terms of putting deals together. So uh, aside from the macroeconomic front, there's also right now on a more micro level in the city of Los Angeles, we're seeing more sellers come to the table and say, I'm serious about putting a deal together because I'd rather sell today and not incur the additional four or five and a half percent tax. All right, question number two. Question number two. So we talked about sales, let's get to leasing, leasing of apartments, where are rents at? Where are rents at compared to where they were last year, compared to where they were before the pandemic? What is the state of the rental market? Yeah, and again, we were leasing a lot of units end of 2022. Um, seasonality, right? People are vacationing, going home. Uh, it was raining a lot in LA, so people didn't even want to go look at apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've seen is actually a stabilization in the rental market. We saw, you know, 2019 rents were really growing. 2020 pandemic, 2021 rents came down, have really rebounded quite aggressively and quite quickly uh, to above uh, the levels where they were at. And now we've seen a very, you know, the, the rental market has almost stabilized at pricing for one bed, two beds, wherever. And, and look, it's not even location specific, I think throughout the city of LA. Yeah, I'll say two things uh, in addition to that, that I've been seeing is that, you know, Max and I, we renovated, we bought and renovated a lot of properties when a few other investors were um, in 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. And so we went to lease up those, most of those units in 2021. We're seeing some of those tenants that are giving in their notices to vacate right now. And we're putting those same exact units back onto the rental market. And we're getting maybe 
you know, 5 6% more and not giving the same concessions that we were giving during peak COVID times, um, or maybe not peak COVID, but right after COVID as people started coming back to LA. Um, so I think rents are definitely up, but not significantly. Uh, the other thing that I'll say is uh, in, in certain higher end markets, like we just had a few in Santa Monica yeah. where we were blown away by the rents that we got. Yeah. So I think if you're in a really prime neighborhood that is supply constrained and you do a, a good job on the renovation, you can still hit really high rents yeah. in, in, in the really good neighborhoods. Yep. Ready for question number three? Yeah. All right. <laughs> sitting on the edge of this counter for question number three. All right. So at the edge of his seat. We, we uh, talked to a lot of people who want to know day to day. We also want to know where is the lending market at? Where is the debt market at? Where are the banks at? The lenders? What's going on? And with interest rates, right? And again, we'll flash back, you know, state of the market. How does it compare to where we were before? We talked about the debt market rates. Just nobody knew where they were going, how high they were going to go and how a lot of banks had pulled out of the market. And I think now that we're in the new year, Banks are starting to come back around. They're opening their balance sheets. It's not so aggressive. They're not jumping back in looking for yeah. deals, um, but they're saying, hey, let's test the waters. Let's see what's available. Um, interest rates are still sitting, you know, in the high 5%, 6% range. So you're looking at five, five, five to, five to six, six and a quarter, just depending on the leverage, location and bank. Um, are interest rates going to go up? It's so hard to know, right? I if you if you asked the fed a year ago they would have said hey we're not going to go above one percent on the fed's fund rate but now they're at you know five percent and, and talking about more increases which has affected a lot of our bridge debt which mm -hmm. we've actually removed a lot of the bridge debt from our portfolio and we're not buying buildings with much bridge debt we're going into permanent financing um, because now you have bridge construction loans at eight nine percent whereas permanent financing's you know that five five to six so I think the debt market's opening back up uh, to deals that make sense with low risk, I think is like yeah. what they're looking at the, as low the, risk. The banks are, like you said, they're proceeding with caution, yeah. right? And that's, and that's, like you said, definitely affecting our investments, um, both on current deals that we own with floating great debt, as well as new purchases that we're looking at. Um, one, one, I'm gonna throw a wrench in, because we, we didn't talk about this before we get to the final question. What what is something or a few things, variables that have um, affected our business, the apartment business, mm -hmm. uh, that have changed significantly over the last year, year and a half? I'll let you answer okay. that. Okay, so of course, because it was my yeah. question. So <laughs> two things that um, are really notable uh, in our business that have uh, thrown a wrench into our business plans are insurance costs and construction costs. So construction costs have been going up basically since COVID started, even before COVID started, construction costs were rising. Then COVID started and there was logistical issues. And because of those logistical issues, the prices kept going up and up and up. And it seems like they just keep going in that direction. Now there has been a, a bit of a tapering, but it, it really, if you look at construction prices now versus pre-COVID, some things have doubled, yeah. right? Um, so it's a serious, serious impact on our business plan, on our underwriting for new purchases. Um, and then I'll let you talk about insurance. Yeah, insurance. I mean, we just we're, we're buying a property on uh, in East LA, and the broker, our insurance agent, said this: the, uh, they don't even do new policies um, for apartments in LA. So it's pretty crazy. And you know, they're looking so deeply at you know systems. If if systems, electrical, plumbing haven't been upgraded, they may not even issue a policy, or the policy could be double what it what it should be. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've seen interest costs not only go up, maybe 40, 50 percent, but we're even seeing um, companies not even issue new policies on properties. Okay. And go ahead. Do you want to talk about insurance? I was going to say two more things. Well, I was going to say just and maybe this is one of your things, but yeah. that the insurance companies are really going after the old buildings. Yes. If you have a building that's 100 years old, I mean, good luck that if you can get a policy, it's going to be at least double what it was a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. And then two other things in the ranch wrench that have been thrown at us is, uh, Not to be confused with <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is, um, ULA, right? So city of LA passed measure ULA where the increase of transfer taxes, city taxes and county taxes on properties between five and 10 million and then 10 plus it's called the mansion tax is the, is the street name. And then 
the other one is the the continuing of the eviction moratorium mm -hmm. and we just got extended another couple months it's obviously on certain um certain things it's you know whether it's rent additional occupants pets it's getting it's just so challenging uh right now with uh tenants in the city if you have a, a nuisance tenant that's causing problems with the property you may not even be able to get them out um, and we've had complaints from certain tenants about a tenant and you still can't do anything so those are kind of two more things that I've seen, you know, really change what's going on in, in LA real estate. Definitely affects our underwriting when we're looking at properties. We have to be more scrupulous, um, more discerning about who the tenants are. It's, you know, make, looking at delinquencies, past due balances, um, has the current owner tried to do a workout situation with the tenant or not? And it's just something that we have to be a lot, uh, very disciplined uh, and discerning about. So. Moving on to our final question, uh, people want to know what is TGG's strategy for 2023? I think it's a good question. Um, we're, we're still buying, there's, there's no doubt about it. We, our business is finding uh, well-located assets, properties that we can perform on in LA, um, performing for our investors. We want to buy more deals, we want to buy more properties, we want to grow our business. I think we're totally focused on growing our business I think, you know, over the past four years, we've taken a different approach um, and now we're, 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 we're a little bit more risk averse. And I think it's given the climate, given the environment, given all these things that we've talked about, debt, uh, transaction market, mm -hmm. regulation, right? So we're, we're taking a, we're staying as aggressive in terms of trying to buy property, but we're taking a much more conservative approach when it comes to risk given uh, you know, in place income, delinquencies, upside, the location of the asset, like all these things, we're getting a lot more conservative, uh, as you like to say, scrupulous on our buying criteria. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, and, and some owners who bought five, six years ago may be thinking to themselves, hey, why isn't my property worth more with yeah. inflation? Um, but if you look at all the factors between uh, increased rent control, uh, constraints on landlords. If you look at construction costs, insurance costs, um, ULA going into effect, interest rates, interest rates huge. Um, it, it's like, yes, the rental markets have gone up. Yes, there's been inflation. Um, yes, you should be able to assume some kind of appreciation for your asset. But when you take all of those other things that are affecting net operating income, which is essentially what people are buying when they're buying these assets, either buying current net operating income or you're buying a future net operating income. And when you have all of these things that are fighting against the net operating income, it kind of balances out to where property worth more with yeah. inflation. Um, but if you look at all the factors between uh, increased rent control, uh, constraints on landlords, if you look at construction costs, insurance costs, um, ULA going into effect, interest rates, interest rates huge. Um, it, it's like, yes, the rental markets have gone up. Yes, there's been inflation. Um, yes, you should be able to assume some kind of appreciation for your asset. But when you take all of those other things that are affecting net operating income, which is essentially what people are buying when they're buying these assets, either buying current net operating income or you're buying a future net operating income. And when you have all of these things that are fighting against the net operating income, it kind of balances out to where property values may have been five, six years ago for certain assets. Um, so like Max was saying, we're still buying, we're still uh, out there talking to brokers every day, making offers, trying to uh, get deals done. Um, but we do have to be more discerning and careful with our underwriting in terms of what we're getting ourselves into, what we're getting our investors into, and make sure that we're going to be able to execute a business plan. Yeah, so with that said, we're buying more. We have about $3 million uh, coming up. We still have a million dollars in exchange, another $3 million coming up. We're buying more real estate, um, trying to grow our portfolio. So if you have a deal, reach out. If you're interested in investing with us, this is what we do. Uh, if, you, if you haven't seen the before, go check out the before. Um, but yeah, we're, TGG is growing. 2023 is another year where we're building our foundation and growing the business. Thanks for watching. Oh,